All right, everyone, I'm gonna show you in this video my three favorite sports hernia exercises. I'm Sebastian from Performance Play Sports Care, part of the locally world famous chiropractors in Coast Mesa, California. Now with these exercises with a sports hernia, typically what you need to do first is you need to make sure that you stabilize the pelvis or the core region together. Then you need to mobilize some of the tissues that are tight. In this case, we're gonna mobilize the adductor. And then we need to strengthen the adductor or at least supply load, get it with a challenge. So we're gonna use those three exercises today to do that. At any point in time, if you feel like you wanna learn a little bit more about what's going on with your groin, we do have a webinar up in the corner, in one of the corners or in the link description below that helps people understand better about what's going on with their hip, their groin, and figuring out a diagnosis, or at least figuring out how to talk to their doctor about what may be going on. All right, everyone, we're gonna get right into the exercises now. This is Desiree. Hi. She's gonna help us out with this today. All right, so go ahead and line your back for me and place your heels up onto this box. You at home can use a couch, a wall, or a dinner chair. Uh, it works really nice to have your hips at 90, your knees at 90, and your feet at 90. Hence, we call this a 90, 90, not 90, but it should be 90 position, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is build some support in the pelvis, mainly by breath. The missing part for the core for a lot of people is not the musculature on the outside. It's the fact that they don't have adequate internal pressure. When, if you think about it, like a Coke can, the Coke can that is unpopped has more pressure in it than one that is, that's popped. And so internal pressure can create a lot of spinal and pelvis stabilization, which then brings in a happy hip, okay? It just makes it so the sports hernia muscles and fascia don't have to, don't have to work so hard, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is, is we're gonna teach Des how to do this. All right, go ahead and um, can you breathe into my hand here? Good, and relax, okay? Now, go ahead and stay right there. I'm just gonna push down your stomach because everybody may be able to see a little bit. So Des has this little bump right here. It's not that she has a weird rib, it's that she has kind of a rib flare right now or she's doing it in, in a poor way. And so ideally what she wants is, if, I, if we looked at her, we wanna make sure that we can't see any hump in the ribs right here at all. So can you put pressure into your fingertips on both sides? Actually, sorry, let's go lobster claw. Just right there, there you go, squeeze yourself and then make your guts fight back. Good, so now she's filling herself up like a balloon, right? And you should feel pressure on the back fingers as well as the fingers in front, okay? Correct. Any problems in this position? No. Okay, it may feel like you're not doing anything. That's okay. At first, we wanna take about five to 10 breaths, just feeling the expansion into the fingers. There's gonna be a deer in the headlights look for a lot of you people, and you're gonna be like, that's okay. Work it out. At some point, you'll feel the back fingers spread away from the front fingers. Okay. We're going to accelerate the process here a little bit. We're going to bring her feet up. Her knees are going to be wider than her feet are. Essentially, the knees are going to be holding a, a beach ball, and these are going to be holding a basketball. Keep breathing into those four points. Stay here for about 30 seconds or so, and then take a break. When you come up, we're going to bring one up and then go up again. So your break may only be about five seconds or so, and you're gonna hold for as long as you can, and we'll say about 30 seconds to a minute roughly. How's it feel? Great. <laughs> now that you've been uh, identified as yeah. having the rib flare. Okay, so this is number one. You have to stabilize the region first. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch the adductor, because people with sports turns, the adductor's tight on everybody. Okay, you wanna show them that? Yeah, absolutely. So for this next one, we're gonna come on up into a four point position. Um, hands underneath the knees, knees underneath the hips. I'm gonna go at an, a diagonal angle so you can see a little bit better what's happening. You're gonna take one leg, extend it out to the side, so the instep of your foot will be in contact with the ground. Now for many people, this is going to be a little tight and a little tender. So we start on the hands and slowly work to sit our bum back towards our heel on the bent leg. And you'll just go at a nice slow pace Anywhere from five to six repetitions is plenty. Now, for some people, if they feel it a little bit in the deeper, like kind of like the middle hamstring adductor, you might wanna rock so that your toes point upward as you sink back. So that's another way to target some of the muscles in that adductor 
groin region that might feel a little stiff or tight. Great. How many reps do you think they should do of this? Uh, about five to six is great. Um, some people might go closer to 10, but I would say that's plenty for most people. Okay. And what happens if they feel any back pain or like glute pain or stuff into like maybe the foot? Mm, so for that one, you want to be a little bit careful. Um, anytime you feel things into the foot, you want to be a little wary, um, especially if it's a movement that you're doing creating the pain. Come out of it. Make sure your body's doing okay. Sometimes we put our body in a weird position and it just doesn't feel great. Maybe try again. See how that feels if it's still doing it. Discontinue the movement. There's no sense in hurting yourself over it. Okay, good. So next we're going to do is we're going to try to strengthen the adductor. We lengthened it a little bit. Now we're going to strengthen it some. You had a good exercise for that, right? I did. This one is called a Copenhagen. Most times people will do this off of a box or a bench when they progress this, but we're going to do the most basic version today. We're going to go down into um, like a modified side plank position here. So elbow stacked underneath the shoulder. We're going to bring the bottom leg forward in front. Back leg is going to be out and extended just like as if you were in your side plank. And now your focus is to drive this extended knee down into the ground as hard as you can. So I'm going to pretend to squish Seb's fingers right here. And I'm just going to lift myself up. Now this already is getting those inner thigh muscles firing. If you want to make this a little bit more challenging, you can pick up that bottom knee. And obviously I just started shaking because it's hard to talk and exercise at the same time. Uh, but that's one of the ways you can progress that movement to make it a little bit more difficult for you. Now, uh, a skill set that we covered earlier was again that four point thing, the mm -hmm. breathing here. And so you could potentially put the fingers on the side, pressure first, and then press into the floor. And so ideally, you, you don't want to really strengthen the hip or the adductor in the absence of any core support, or at least subpar core support. So that's just a little trick to do. It's sometimes hard to remember to do that, uh, unless you keep your hand there and pinch a little bit, or someone's there to remind you. Absolutely. Anything you want to add on that exercise? Um, breathe. <laughs> that's a good idea. That is a good one. So these are the three basic exercises we like to do for people with sports hernias. Now, there's a lot of different exercises we could pick and everybody, uh, has, they deserve to have something customized specifically to them. And since we do have lots and lots of YouTube videos on various different conditions like sports hernia, if you read in the comments, you'll see some people say, wow, that really worked for me. And other people say, this, this hurt me. This, 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 this does not feel good. I had to stop. Correct. With that in mind, everybody should have an assessment. Everybody should be coached into what to do specifically to see what's going on with them. So if you guys are looking for help, we do have in-person and virtual assistance. You can find our link in the description below. Worst case scenario, make sure that you actually look at that webinar that we have available to you. Okay, It's really good information. It'll cover a lot of different reasons why someone may have groin pain in addition to sports hernias. And I think it'll start you out in the right direction. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, see you next time.